See, genetic drift, which is also known as Sewell Wright effect, is one of the evolutionary forces that influences allele frequency of a population. Genetic drift is the change in the frequency of alleles in a population due to random sampling of organisms. That is why it is also referred as random genetic drift. So this genetic drift is random fluctuation in the number of gene variants in a population. Because of this drift, one can see major changes in the allele frequency. So genetic drift that uh, results into prominent changes uh, in a small populations, that is one can observe a very drastic change in the frequency of allele if a population gets reduced to a very small size. It causes allele frequency to change randomly. It may lead to loss of genetic variation within a population. That is, some of the alleles may increase to a very high frequency or even may get fixed completely in the population and others may get totally eliminated or get reduced to a very um, less frequency. And random genetic drift can cause harmful alleles to become fixed. Even the harmful alleles may get fixed or uh, they uh, may show higher frequency in the population. If not fixed, at least their frequency could be higher just because of uh, founder effect or just because of this sampling. Then this drift may be caused due to founder effect, bottleneck effect, or effective population size. These are the three uh, major you know, ways by which the population size gets reduced to a small number and uh, that may result into genetic drift. So let us consider these three uh, factors one by one. Founder effect means uh, a new population is founded just by few members. That is if there is a very large population suppose. This area shows the presence of uh, a population uh, that is individuals of a particular species, they are living in this area and now some of them, just few of them migrate to a new place and establish a new population over there, then this will be a founded population. So because uh, only few individuals have uh, come to this place, so the allele frequency in this new population will be different uh, from that uh, it was existing in the ancestral or in the earlier large population. So uh, this may be the result and we can understand this aspect in more better way in this diagram. See here it is a very large population and suppose this large population has three different kind of individuals. Genotypically they are capital AA, capital A small a and small a small a. We are considering a single gene locus and since there are two alleles on that specific locus, three different genotypes will be possible. So these are the individuals who are genetically capital AA or they are heterozygotes or small AA. So we can calculate the frequency of capital A and small A in this population. And suppose that the frequency of capital A is 50%, that is 0.5 and small A it is also 0.5, that is 50%. So both alleles, they have equal frequency in this population. Now just few individuals move from this area to a new place and establish a population over there. Just you see four individuals uh, come to this new spot and then they uh, reproduce and increase their number. Now after certain generation, if we analyze this population, then we may find the uh, frequency of capital A being 0.8 and small a 0.2. So this change from 50-50% to 80% and 20% uh, has resulted only because of this founder effect. Likewise, this is another population. Here, uh, again, few individuals come and establish a new population and uh, we find that the recessive allele is small a 
it be, gets fixed over here because its frequency is 100% that is 1 and the other allele its frequency is 0. This is third population in which the frequency of capital A is shown to be 0 0.6 and the other one 0 0.4. And uh, in this fourth population the frequency of capital A is 0 0.7, other one is 0 0.3. Here in this fifth one capital A its frequency is 90% 0 0.9 and the small a it is 0.1. In this uh, population the capital A is 0.2 and the small a is 0.8. So anything may happen that is why it is called as random genetic drift means there may be random change from the existing frequency there may be random change in the founded population. So you do not know what will happen the uh, composition of this population or newly founded population will actually depend on the members which come over here and found the population. So this is the meaning of a random genetic drift that because of sampling effect there may be a random change in the frequency of alleles uh, and uh, that change will be totally different uh, if compared with the ancestral population or the population from which it gets derived. Here this is the second uh, factor bottleneck effect that if there is a very large population and this large population it gets reduced to a very small size. Now uh, because of this reduction in the size again only few members are left. So means there may be some you know environmental factor like uh, uh, temperature there uh, becomes a sudden change in the temperature and that results mortality of so many individuals in this large population only few are left uh, over there and then the population will start from this uh, few number of individuals so this will be result uh, this will be called as bottleneck effect because uh, uh, because of environmental factors mainly abiotic factors as change in salinity or change in you know temperature or change in some kind of uh, you know means inavailability of food may be there so uh, that may result the uh, mortality of so many individuals we can consider uh, for example the mosquito population during uh, rainy season the uh, mosquito population it increases to a large size and again when there is uh, the winter season when the temperature reaches to just 2 degrees Celsius then uh, there will be mortality of a uh, large number of mosquito and just few members could be left in the area and then when again uh, you know a favorable condition comes then there will be increase in the size of that uh, you know population. So uh, several insect populations or even you know fish populations uh, they experience this kind of reduction in the size uh, because of environmental effect. So that is called as bottleneck effect. And when only few individuals are left, then definitely uh, the gene frequency or the presence of a specific kind of genotype in them will determine the uh, allele frequency of that population. And that may be different from its ancestral you know, population. So Ancestral means the population which was just you know present uh, in the earlier generation. So uh, this is actually bottleneck effect. Bottleneck means uh, through uh, such you know portion like bottle uh, neck will be always a narrow structure. So from that narrow structure only few members will be able to pass out. So this narrow portion is actually the change in the environmental condition which actually allows only few individuals to survive. Those who are adopted, those who have some specific kind of characteristics, they are able to withstand or to tolerate that uh, uh, adverse condition and survive. So they are able to reproduce and increase in number. Several population of insects as I said uh, face this situation and uh, this uh, phenomena results into flush and crash effect also. Flush means uh, the population will increase to a small size, uh, sorry will be um, increased to a very large size and then uh, because of environmental effect it will get reduced to a small size so that will be crash effect again the population will grow to a large size so again flush will be there and uh, when 
the adverse condition will come the population will get reduced to a small size so flush and crash effect may occur and that will result into change in the allele frequency in subsequent generations so that may lead to speciation that may lead to drastic change in the genetic composition of the population and it may consequently uh, result into uh, you know speciation so that can be explained then the third you know factor uh, that is effective population size uh, let us understand what does this effective population size mean several uh, you know members in mammalian populations like if you consider a cattle a specific cattle population what you will observe that uh, uh, there may be uh, male female individuals of varying age groups so only few individuals will be there which may be reproductively mature and will be participating in the reproduction or mating process so those individuals who are reproductively contributing to the next generation they form the effective population size so young uh, which are still uh, not you know mature one they will not be participating in reproduction those who have become very old they will also not be participating in um, reproduction so only uh, the breeding individuals are there who actually uh, produce um, progeny for the next generation so sometimes a population looks very large but the members who are actually contributing to the next generation they are only few in number so since they are very few in number uh, that will also affect the allelic frequency of the population and this effective population size can be calculated by using the formula n e is equal to 4 nm into nf divided by nm plus nf where n e uh, means effective population size then nm means number of breeding males and nf means number of breeding females and just for example if we consider that there is a population of mammal means uh, a specific species of mammals are there they are occupying in an area where only two uh, male individuals are there which are participating in reproduction because in several populations of mammals just one or two uh, are only few male individuals are there who are robust and who would be uh, taking control uh, over the herd and suppose only 15 females are there who are reproductively mature so this uh, way we can calculate effective population size that uh, n e will be equal to 4 into 2 that is number of breeding males into 15 number of breeding females divided by 2 plus 15 and uh, when you will solve it it will come 7.06 so what we observe that uh, although 17 individuals are there who are reproduct uh, playing role in reproduction but uh, the fact is effective population size that is those who are contributing to the next generation are just seven so by using this formula we can have the idea that a population may be looking large but in reality uh, that may not be so large uh, because uh, reproduct means those individuals who are actually uh, passing gametes to the next generation they are comparatively very few in number then let us explain uh, some of the examples uh, on this uh, random genetic drift people have done uh, several different kinds of experiments to see that how a small population result into more fluctuation in the allele frequency and one of the experiments which was uh, long back conducted by Dobzhinsky in Drosophila pseudo obscura by considering the frequency of the standard gene arrangements and uh, PP that is Pike's peak it is a kind of inversion uh, and uh, by using these two gene arrangements he was able to explain the role of uh, 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 this uh, random genetic drift in changing the allele frequency so what you should understand if you see the polytene chromosomes in Drosophila, you can see the specific binding pattern. And if uh, uh, in the uh, you know in the um, specific chromosome area uh, there may be normal binding pattern that will be referred as ST by ST. And if you have inverted gene arrangement, then uh, such area will be referred as suppose PP. So he actually used all heterozygotes 
that is EST by PP to establish populations and he observed that what actually happens in the next generation. So he observed narrow range of variation in PP frequency in large population but uh, uh, he could see that in small populations the variation of this PP gene arrangement was uh, very high. So this we can understand here as I told uh, he established uh, populations in June 1955 and uh, all the members who were used to establish um, populations were only few in number. Suppose just 10 individuals were used to start populations and exactly in 10 food bottles uh, are you know population cases experiments were set and in every you know population case just 10 individuals were introduced and uh, composition wise they were heterozygotes in the beginning. So you can say that the EST arrangement was 50% and the PP arrangement it was uh, also 50%. And uh, he went on uh, transferring just few individuals in subsequent generations and in October 55 he analyzed the uh, frequency of PP in these 10 populations and he observed that variations existed in them. In some cases it was above 40% but in others it was even uh, less than 25%. So this much variation was there. And uh, in November uh, 56 when he uh, observed uh, see, uh, the frequency of PP in these 10 different populations which were actually being established or being started uh, with just few individuals that is 10 pairs of individuals suppose then uh, uh, you can see the variation is too much is starting up to from 50 percent uh, up to uh, you can say 10 percent so this much variation in the frequency of pp that is pike's peak inversion um, was recorded but when he took large number of individuals large number means you can consider that just uh, 100 pairs were used so so many individuals were put in single you know population case and exactly the same way as in the earlier you know 10 population cases were there likewise for establishing large population you know 10 cases were used so what he observed that uh, again uh, you know exactly in the same time period this experiment was uh, done means it was going parallel both experiments were going parallel to each other so in october 55 again this analysis showed variation but variation is not so much as uh, uh, it is there in case of small populations now in uh, november 56 when a similar you know analysis was done then the frequency of pp was found to range uh, you can see here but this range is not too much but in case of a small population much variation exists. So this was one of the classical experiments performed by Dobzhansky and this gave the idea that uh, one can observe a very wide range of variation uh, in the populations if uh, the number of founding individuals are less in number and uh, one can see narrow range of variation if so many populations are, are being established by large number of individuals. Exactly the same uh, experiment is shown here where the population is being started with just 20 individuals, 200 individuals and 2000 individuals. You can see when so many individuals are there, 2000 individuals, then the frequency which uh, here is starting with 50 percent you can consider the frequency of any you know specific allele like capital A or small a two, two alleles are there so uh, suppose frequency of this capital A is 50 percent and then uh, after you know these many generations 50 generations you can see very narrow you know range of variation is there in all these individual populations and when the members are 200 then uh, you can see a wider range of variation exist and when the population is being started with just 20 individuals then in some cases the uh, uh, there you know is fixation of alleles means uh, just in 30 generation you can see that there are two population in which 
one of the alleles gets totally eliminated and in others it uh, reaches to means one uh, means they get totally fixed and you are not getting any population where uh, still both alleles are being continued so if you start just few number of individuals then the uh, fate of population could be anything now this is another you know uh, observation seen in case of dunkers dunkers are the people who uh, live in america that is united states of america these are known as german baptist brethren they migrated uh, early in 18th century uh, from uh, south that means they migrated from germany and got settled to south central pennsylvania so uh, and these are the people who do not keep contact i mean the uh, marriage contact or marriage relationship with the people present either in the german area are present uh, in the nearby area means uh, the pennsylvania usa population is there so they don't uh, have marriage relations with them means they uh, have their own you know setup uh, they try to marry marry their um, young individuals only among uh, themselves so there is inbreeding actually in this population so they came from germany got settled to united states they are referred as dunkers and uh, as i said that uh, they are totally cut off from their parental populations and they are also not keeping uh, you know marriage relations with the people living in the adjoining uh, areas of usa so they remain as a population which is a totally a separated one so what people did they simply uh, considered the frequency of uh, blood groups present in the individuals uh, uh, living in the nearby area of these dunkers and also their ancestral german population you can see here the frequency of a that is 40% in us populations and 45% in the german uh, parental population but in their case in dunker it is 60% frequency of b r a b Uh, that has been recorded as 15% in case of usa 15% in case of german parental population but 5% in case of dunkers here uh, the frequency of m that is 30% in us population 30% in their german populations but 45% in dunkers population frequency of mn is 50% in uh, us as well as german populations but 41% in dunkers and frequency of this n is 20% in us 20% in german but just 14% in dunkers so there exist a uh, distinct difference uh, in the gene frequency or uh, frequency of uh, frequency of this uh, a b m n uh, you know genes or you can say blood group types uh, blood group types so Uh, this is only because of this founding effect as i said in the beginning that just few individuals might have come to united states of america they got settled over there and since they do not have uh, means mixing with the adjacent populations they are keeping their initial frequency i think being represented and that is why they show difference uh, from either population okay so this difference in dunkers is only because of founding effect i think that this much information might be useful to all those who will listen this lecture